What's up, y'all? I'm back. I know y'all are probably like, girl, where in the world have you been? I know. I know, okay? I, I know. Your girl has a tendency of disappearing from time to time, but we're back. And I promise this time I'm going to be so much more consistent. And I promised. So you know it's real. I'm actually so excited to be back with my love. This conversation is actually something that came with in a combo with me and one of my closest friends. So shout out to her because if it was not for her, I would have never had the thought like, wow, I really need to make a video about this. And guess what? That's exactly what we did. So today let's get real and talk about how to actually be authentic and what that actually means. So what does it actually mean to be authentic? When I say being authentic, that refers to relating to yourself or being true to yourself. Someone who's authentic lives life according to their own values and goals rather than someone else's. Now let's back it up a little bit. So you could be thinking one or two things as you're watching this video. On one hand, you could be thinking, okay, I follow you, I understand. Then on the other hand, you could be having all these questions like, what if I don't know myself? How do I live my life according to my own values or my own goals? What if I don't have any? What if I don't know what I value? What if I don't have any goals or what if I don't know myself? So first things first, ask yourself, why do I struggle to be my authentic self? Or why do I feel like I can't express my true self? Is it because of fear of judgment or vulnerability? Is it because of past experiences? Do these reasons cause me to lack trust or feel unsafe in expressing myself? The first step is identifying the root cause. And you want to identify the root cause so that you can understand how to solve the problem. Once you identify the root cause, then you can move on to step two, which is acceptance. Accepting that this is how or what you feel and it's okay to feel this way and that your feelings are actually valid. Once you genuinely accept the situation for what it is or your feelings for what they are, then you can move on to step three, which is detachment. The best part about the ability to choose is that you decide whether this is something that you hold on to or something that you let go of. Once you make this decision, then you can learn to detach. I think this is such a beautiful process. like being able to truly identify your triggers and then accept that your feelings are valid and then being able to completely and utterly detach that from your identity if you choose to and you know this entire subject just reminds me of like the process of you know accepting a situation and then detaching like the law of detachment literally if you know me then you know i love me some seven spiritual laws of success okay and if you don't know if you have not read that book you need to read that book it is 16 dollars on amazon five dollars on audible it's a free pdf version and then apple music has some musical meditations if you're feeling spicy okay it is worth wonders for me anybody that i know that has read it it's worked wonders for them and i'm gonna do y'all a favor because i love y'all okay i'm gonna link everything down below so that you're able to have access to this if you want it you'll have it so just to touch on this subject a little bit in the book the law of detachment is the sixth law and the author explains that anything that you want can be acquired through detachment because detachment is based on the unquestioning belief in the power of your true self and that ladies and gentlemen is why we're here and obviously like attachment is the exact opposite so whether you're attached to the fear of judgment or the fear of being vulnerable now just a little disclaimer this is not to say that this is something that is easy of course it's not something that is easy it's going to take time effort practice and repetition Without active practice and repetition, you don't really know what you think you know. And even if you do know it, you'll lose it over time if you lack that practice and repetition. So the next step is figuring out who you truly are and what you truly want. Once you detach, you can start to figure out the things that you truly value. So here are some ways to find your true self. So the first thing is mindfulness. If you can control your brains and you can control your thoughts, you can ultimately control your reality. Once you start to shift your thoughts, your reality will also shift. 
some things that I do personally, and this is up to you whether you decide you want to do this or not, but the first thing would be meditation. So I like to do morning meditations, afternoon meditations, sleep meditations. There's so many different types of meditations that you can do, that you can find, that can be guided or not guided, you know. It really just depends on you and what you prefer and what you like, and you can find a ton of them on YouTube. The next thing would be journaling. So being able to transfer your thoughts on to paper it sort of helps you just like empty your brain and be able to think freely the next thing will be practicing gratitude and this is a big one okay y'all this is this is a really really big one because a lot of people don't realize the importance of practicing gratitude a big saying is like attitude of gratitude a lot of people that have really really bad attitudes typically don't live the best lives and that's just what it is, right? If you're grateful for things consistently and constantly, it's like you're literally always being blessed because you're grateful for the things that you have. So just remember to have an attitude of gratitude and the blessings will flow. Another way to practice mindfulness is exercises. So whether that be like breathing exercises or exercises that include like your five senses, those are great things to incorporate in like your daily schedule to help you practice that mindfulness. So the second thing you can do to find your true self is ask yourself a series of questions like what makes me happy or what are my needs and wants or what would you do if there were no limits or limitations in your life? Something that's really important to remember is that these things will become clear once you deep dive into the process. So whether you're asking yourself these questions now, as you continue through the process, these questions that you have now will begin to be answered simply from you doing the things and putting in the practice and putting in the time, the effort and that repetition in order to get to where you want to go and become the person you want to be. You'll have all these realizations and what you want will eventually become very clear to you. So the last and final step is to simply just do it. Like, I dare you, go out there and do it. Go out there and truly find yourself. Find what you're looking for within yourself. Identify your true self, identify your authentic self and find peace in that. Now, another disclaimer, I'm not telling you to go out here and rob a bank. Okay, I'm not saying go out here and rob a bank or do anything crazy, but all I'm simply saying is look within yourself and figure out what you want, what you want to do, who you want to become, where you're going in life. Figure out all these things. You have to take the time to do the self work. You have to take the time to really deep dive and figure out who you are in order to change your life. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you become more authentic. If you haven't already, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I will see you guys later.